Hey everybody, welcome back to All the Math. That's all the math you need for computer science. Today we're going to be looking at matrix matrix multiplication, which is the big granddaddy operation that we've been building up to. It is a little bit counterintuitive, but it's not too bad uh, once you learn uh, sort of the mechanics of how it works, especially since it bears some resemblance to our matrix vector multiplication that we did in a previous episode. And in fact, really it can be viewed as the extension of that, right? So the weirdest thing about it is that it just doesn't work the way you would think it would work. You would think that taking a matrix times another matrix would multiply each of the elements by each other, right? After all, that's what matrix addition does. Yet matrix multiplication is defined in this somewhat weird way, but as it's going to turn out, that's exactly what we want the operation to be. That's going to give us a lot of power to compute a lot of different things, all right? So first of all, let's talk about the dimensions involved, So because this is kind of weird too. Let's say I have a matrix here, and it might be square, it might be not. And let's say I have another matrix over here. It might be square, it might be not. And I want to multiply the two of them together. So there's two rules. So first of all, let's say that this is an M by N matrix. And remember that that's what we mean when we say M by N. We mean M rows and columns. And let's say this guy is P by Q. Okay, so this is a P by Q matrix. Don't be confused by the fact that I drew the P over here. It was just because I had more room to put that curly brace over here than I did here, right? All right, so an M by N matrix times a P by Q matrix. Here are the two rules that you got to memorize. One, N must be equal to P. Otherwise, stop, and we can't even do this. Okay, so just like for matrix vector multiplication, the width of the matrix had to be equal to the number of elements of the vector, uh, otherwise the operation wasn't even defined, that's true as well here. The number of columns of the first vector, or excuse me, first matrix, bizarrely, has to be equal to the number of rows of the second vector, of matrix, right? And number two, if that is the case, then you can do this operation and the result is a, get this, M by Q matrix. Okay? So the number of rows of our answer is equal to the number of rows of the left operand, and the number of rows in the right answer, uh, of the answer is equal to the number of columns of the right uh, operand. I think I said rows instead of columns here, but you know what I mean, right? Okay, so... That's the general rule. So if you think about how this plays out, right? Let's say I have a two by five, uh, and it's got you know one, one, zero, nine, negative six, three, three, pi, e to the fifth, four, and let's say I've got a five by three guy here. So we've got one, one, two, two, three, one, three, two, four, nine, six, six, two, two, five. And let's say I want to multiply these two matrices together and get something. Uh, we know we can do it because this one has five columns. This one has five rows. Therefore, the operation makes sense. N does equal P. And the answer we're going to get is going to be a two by three matrix. Now, again, the reason that seems weird to me, first of all, this is a completely different size and shape than that is. So it's not at all obvious that I would be able to do this multiplication, right? Second of all, the answer that you get bears no resemblance to either of your operands. I mean, I started with a 2 by 5, and I multiply it by a 5 by 3, and I get a 2 by 3, which is a relatively little guy here, right? Boom, 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 boom. Sort so of doesn't seem to make sense, and yet that's the way that it's uh, defined. Now, the way to make sense of this, and I'm going to show you sort of the you know uh, mechanics that you go through in order to compute a matrix multiplication operation, uh, is simply a repeat multiple times of the matrix vector op operation. All right, so let's uh, look at that. Uh, let's say I start with a matrix here, and I'm going to make this one, three, two, zero. Now, suppose I'm going to multiply this by this matrix here, five, or excuse me, this vector, 517. Let's say I want to multiply those two together. Uh, remember how we do this. We know that we're going to take this row dot producted with this column to get this first entry. So that's going to be 1 times 5 plus 3 times 17. Uh, hard math, uh, seven, uh, maybe that's 51, I think. Uh, and so this is going to be 56 for the top entry here, 56. 
And then we know we're going to multiply this bottom guy by the column. Uh, that's easier because that's going to be 2 times 5 plus 0 something. Uh, so we're going to get 56, 10, right? So that is how we do a matrix vector multiplication uh, is we just do it like that. Now, imagine if I wanted to take this same matrix here. And this time I wanted to multiply it by a different vector. Let's multiply it by negative 2, negative 4 and see what we get. Again, this operation is defined because the vector is the right length compared to the number of columns of this matrix. So now we've got 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, minus 12, so that's negative 14, I believe. And we take 2, 0, dot producted with negative 2, negative 4, we're going to get negative 4, and that's my answer there, right? Okay, now, the reason I did this was to say, what if I want to take 1, 3, 2, 0, and I want to multiply it by a two by two, which we know is going to be legit, and we want this to be 5, 17, negative 2, negative 4, right? So all I did was I took this guy here and stuck him in the first column, and then I took this guy here and I stuck him in the second column. So I've just made a matrix out of those two column vectors here. What is the answer going to be? And I'll show you the mechanics for, for bringing it out, but let me just put up the answer here. The answer is going to be 56, 10, negative 14, 4. Excuse me, negative 4, right? In other words, this vector here is the left column of our answer, and this vector right here is the right column of our answer. So multiplying a matrix by another matrix, you can think of it as just doing a bunch of those column-wise matrix vector operations. And in fact, if we added another one here, uh, let's say we added another column, uh, kind of running out of room, let me put it over here. So suppose we had, you know, one, three, two, zero, uh, and we wanted to multiply it by uh, three, nine. What would we get? Uh, we'd get 1 times 3 plus 3 times 9 is 30, I think, and then 2 times 6 is 115, maybe. So, again, uh, what if I wanted to multiply 1, 3, 2, 0 by 5, 17, negative 2, negative 4, 3, 9? So, again, this does make sense because it doesn't matter how many columns are in the right operand in terms of making it a legit operation, right? The only thing is, things that have to match is that has to be dot productable with each of the columns, and therefore we have two dimensions times two dimensions that lets us get a valid dot product, so we're good. And so the answer, of course, uh, as you can see, oops, wrong color, is going to be 56, 10, negative 14, 4, and 30, 15, right? Uh, and that's because we just added this new column here to the thing we were multiplying by on the right-hand side. Therefore, we're going to get a new column that is the answer here. So that's all matrix multiplication is. Once you've got matrix vector multiplication, you just repeat that a bunch of times. And so here's the way you want to think of it uh, if you just want to sort of do it from scratch. What we're going to do is we're going to take our two matrices, and we're going to take the dot product of every row with every column. It's the dot product of every row of the left-hand operand and every column of the right-hand operand. And so we're going to have as many dot products as there are uh, rows of the left-hand guy times uh, columns of the uh, right-hand guy. And since we're going to have m times q different dot products, that means our answer is going to be m by q, because that's a matrix that has as many dot products as we need. And the dot product of row number 2, say, by column number 2, is going to go in position 2, 2 of this matrix. And the dot product of row number 3 with column number 1 is going to go at row 3, column 1 of this matrix. 
So every dot product I do with a row of this times a column of this is going to be one of the entries over here. And if I want to ask which entry is that going to be, well, it's going to be in the row that corresponds to the row we multiplied it by. And it's going to be in the column corresponding to the column that we multiplied it by. All right. So as most things in life, uh, or at least in math, it's best seen by an example. So let's do one here. Let's make a real easy one so we can do the math. One, two, three, four negative two, negative one. Let's say that's our guy there. And let's make uh, a matrix here that's going to be one, six, zero, five. Okay. So the first question is, can we do this at all? And the answer is yes, because that right there has the same number of columns as this has rows. Therefore, we are going to get an answer. We might ask ourselves, what is the size of the answer? The size of the answer is going to be three by two. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a three by two matrix. In this case, that happens to be the size of our left operand, but in general, it won't be. In general, it's just going to be some sized thing. And so we're going to figure these out, right? So what is one four dot producted with one zero? That's going to be one. What is two negative two dot producted with one zero? That's going to be two. What is three negative one dot producted with one zero? That's going to be three. What is one four dot producted with six five? That's going to be six plus 20, so 26. What is two negative two dot producted with six five? That's going to be six times two is 12 minus 10, which is two. Correct my math if I make any mistakes here. And then three negative one dot product with six five is going to be six times three is 18 uh, minus five is going to be uh, 13. And so this right here is going to be our answer. Now, why that would be the answer and why it makes sense that that's a legitimate operation, suspension of disbelief uh, for now, but we will see that uh, in future segments.